Well, I've got the legs out of the kiln and into the seat. Stretchers are right over here. Now, one thing is the humidity's high today, and these tenons will start wicking up moisture through your end pretty, pretty fast. And uh, uh, you know, you don't want to leave them out too long. So, when it's this high humidity, when it's raining or whatever. I move right through this. In the winter time, when I got the stove going, the humidity drops in to the 20% range in this shop. I can just take all day to do it. But uh, so just remember that. You know, if you if you got any downtime while you're doing this, stick stuff back in the kiln. Uh, okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure the uh, angles on for the side stretchers, where they're going to go in right here. And uh, so I can. I use these rubber bands and just pop it right in the groove there and the groove right there. And for a center line on the maple, I could take a aluminum angle and run it up and down it. And the oxidation will rub off on the on the piece. But for the oak like this, it rubs off on it. But it's got all those stripes on it anyway. It's hard to see, hardly even worth, worth doing. So I'll just eyeball it. So I'll show you. I'll, I'll measure them over here where I can see. But I'll show you what I'm doing over here. So I'll be putting the protractor up like that and be reading the uh, acute angle, be reading this angle. So they'll be in the in the 70s most likely, uh, or maybe the front leg might be close to 80. Now, you might be tempted to read them down here, but that's not going to give you a, a very accurate reading. If you measure along the leg, the distance from there to there and there to there is the same. But because this leg has more rate to it, it's laying down, it has more angle to it, it means that that groove is actually closer to the seat. So it's closing this angle up and opening this one up uh, as opposed to what you would be measuring right like, right like that. Okay. So wouldn't do it that way. There are a lot of other ways to do it. A thousand one ways to do it, but that's not one of them. Okay. So, Let me read here. So I've got 70 there. Now I write it right on the leg. I don't want to be looking at a piece of paper trying to figure out what the left rear leg is. I just look right at the leg and it's written right on it. I'm going to paint it anyway. This one's 76. Seventy. Read this one while I'm down, so I don't have to get back up. And uh, so this one's seventy, and this one is seventy-six point five. Aim small, miss small. Um, Okay, now I need to go after the uh, after the um, center stretcher here. So I've got to get uh, got to get that one. I could have left those rubber bands on, and I need two more. Wait a minute, I get them. Nice thing about a small shop, you don't ever have to go too far. Um, so 
So there's a lot of ways to get this angle too. So of course this is the angle I'm looking for right, right there. And uh, but uh, the way I like to get it is to measure this angle. Well, actually, you're measuring this angle, and then you measure this angle by measuring its supplement right here. I hope I didn't confuse you with that. But I'm going to read acute on both of these. So that one shows an 83. And this one, if I read acute, shows 84. So that'd be 83.5. And that is the left stretcher right here. So now I'm going to take this left stretcher in my hand. And the first thing I'm going to do is write 83.5 right there. I'm going to be, well, I wrote it on the wrong side. 83.5. Because I'm going to be drilling my hole right into this radial plane. And I'm going to be looking right at that 83.5. So hopefully I won't uh, drill it wrong. But now we've got to orient this and decide which leg it's going to go into. So first off, let's just put the number of legs. So that's number three, and I'm going to write it on the bottom of this stretcher. And I know that those numbers point towards that foot, because it's right on the bottom of the stretcher, so I'll, I won't flip it over that way. And this one's number two, written on the bottom. And so I've got the numbers, I've got the orientation this way or this way because of those numbers and I've got the angle. Now what I need to know is where I'm going to drill this hole right here. I know it's going into the radial plane because you want the growth rings to run perpendicular to the long, the growth rings of the tenon to always run perpendicular to the long wood fibers of the mortise piece and I've talked and talked, talked about this and it has to do with uh, uh, the expansion and shrinkage and isolating the two planes that shrink the least and isolating the two planes that shrink the most and making a, a tighter joint. It's straight out of Bruce Hogley's book, Understanding Wood. Um, so let's go to, so it's going to go into the radial plane, but because there's splay on the leg, the stretcher gets rotated out just a tad bit in order to line it up with that leg and the way that I do that is I put thumb there, the middle finger right there on the ellipsis, just dead on the ellipsis. I turn it over, I'm looking right at the center of the ray plane and if I rotate it out about an eighth of an inch, so now we're getting really scientific, out about an eighth of an inch, that ought to turn that stretcher to where those wood fibers are lined up just in the way that I want them. And now while I'm here, I'm always standing at the back of the chair at this point, and I put an arrow coming back, and that means that's towards the acute angle. I'll be standing back here. So, because once I get that stretcher over in my jig, I don't know if I'm leaning this way with it or if I'm leaning this way with it. So now I've got the arrow and uh, the angle and all my information. So I'll do it to the uh, right stretcher and uh, without you looking and then we'll come back and we'll be ready to board. Uh, okay, so before I pull these out and start boring, uh, I'm going to mark the direction of the saw curve for the wedges. So the wedges will always go in to a piece of wood. The, the, the direction of the wedge is determined by the mortised piece. So this wedge is determined by the seat. And the seat's long wood fibers run this way, so the wedge will run this way and be exerting pressure on the end grain of the seat. Uh, you can saw them after you put it together if you want. Uh, you just have to do it with a with a hand saw, and uh, here, if you have a band saw like I do, you can a little bit easier. You can mark them 
and then take it over to the bandsaw.